Hey guys, this is Amanda Kelly with this art called Life. Welcome to day seven of my little Let There Be Light series. So uh, for 21 days through the 21st, I started on December 1st, I'm doing, um, just to catch you guys up, I'm doing a series on Let There Be Light, but it's diving into what actually is the light, what is the dark, what do we mean when we say these things, and then practically speaking, what we can do to stay in the light, to connect with the light, to live in the light, and what does that actually mean at a practical level? And the last few videos, I've been diving into that more deeply, and it's a it's primarily about connecting with higher vibrational emotional states and elevating your frequency. Now, I will be getting into the notion of the shadow and um, and 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 the fact that this is not about spiritual bypassing. This is not about toxic positivity at all we really do have to face the shadows and we we cannot pretend that they don't exist that said i think that we need to be grounded in the light in order to do the deeper work i mean it goes hand in hand sometimes going through the dark enables us to open up to the light but it it really helps to have a foundation of practices that can help you elevate your frequency and stay focused on the the light at the end of the tunnel, basically, to have hope, to have faith. That's what it's all about. So today, I'm gonna dive deeper into this idea of connecting with the light and really get into practical ways of generating and grounding down these higher frequency states because um, once you get into uh, the practices that elevate your frequency, sometimes, we actually can raise our vibration too high to the point where our body can't handle it. So it's a really important to stay grounded. This, this still might sound a little like esoteric and woo-woo to you. That's fine. Just bear with me. I'm going to kind of bring it all together. But but right now we're getting into the practicalities of, of how to actually connect with the light and generate that higher vibrational state for yourself and crucially to ground it down in your body, be, have an embodied experience of this. Because we are humans having an embodied experience in the physical uh, reality. So um, yesterday I started the practical, the, pieces by talking about gratitude. I did a deep dive into the benefits of gratitude and why a gratitude practice is so powerful. So that would be probably step one or my first recommendation would be to really reconnect with a sense of gratitude and appreciation day in, day out, no matter where you are in life. And I was getting into this yesterday. There is always something you can find to be grateful for, even if it's just the breath that you're taking right now. The fact that you woke up this morning, the fact that you are seeing this content and have access to it. These are all really profound things that you can be grateful for right now. So sometimes that downward comparison can also help. Uh, you know, I when I was going through cancer, sometimes I would I would go to the level of well, at least I have a decent diagnosis or a prognosis rather. At least I'm young. At least I went into this with a strong body. At least I know a lot about mindset, yada, yada, yada. So there's always like, and at least there's always a silver lining. So gratitude is key. And I encourage you to go back to yesterday's video if you want a little bit more deep dive into that. Um, these are all on IGTV as well as YouTube, which I've connected in my uh, bio. So um, my next thing would be to connect. My next uh, practical step to connect with the light would literally be to connect, connect with your friends, your family, with loved ones, with other people who support your growth. Crucially, you want to surround yourself with people who support your growth and who support your well-being, who support your vision, who support your progress, all of that. People who uplift you, who inspire you. And so sometimes it does mean connecting virtually and that can even, sometimes for me, that aspect of connecting can be 
kind of a um, second degree connection where I am watching a video on YouTube that inspires me. Now that's not 100% where I would recommend the majority of your connection goes, but that at the end of the day, sometimes that can really help you find your people, help you find your community if you don't feel like you're supported by people right now. Because right now, it, it, it is a little more challenging, but I also think that this is a beautiful opportunity for us to get clear on our values and to get clear on our relationships and who is supporting and uplifting us and to nurture those people that are. So connection, I also mean connection with yourself, connection with um, you know your, your inner guidance, your inner intuition, really deepening that connection and learning how to trust yourself, learning how to tap into your inner wisdom more and more. And that generates more and more trust in yourself as well. Connecting with nature. Connecting with nature is so, so key right now, I think in particular because we have been encouraged to stay inside and really be disconnected from nature. And there are many studies, scientifically based studies backed by research that show that nature heals. So connecting with nature in a physical way, like putting your feet on the ground in the sand, uh, you know, it's, it's something like that where we're literally connecting with the ground. Now I'm getting into grounding and earthing, but connecting with the earth, connecting with something related to nature, water, a body of water, whether that's a lake, a stream, a river, the ocean, connecting with water, connecting with the ground. There are literal ions on the ground that have a physical healing impact on our body. So we want to, it's the electrons. Um, so we want to connect with the earth because those electrons can literally change our physical state. So they're, they're actually healing for us and sunshine. <laughs> this is so key. So sunshine is literal light. So how can we connect with the light? Go out and be in the sun. <laughs> and again, we've been encouraged to stay inside, to be in lockdown, so on and so forth. But please, by yourself, however you feel safe, go outside, get some sunshine on your face. Let it infiltrate your skin. Do not put sunblock on up to 20 minutes, it will, it, you're fine. 15 to 20 minutes of sunblock free sunlight will give you sufficient vitamin D. And again, at a practical health well being level, vitamin D is really crucial for our immune system. So, for a little perspective, They've done studies where cancer, they've measured vitamin D levels of cancer patients. Across the board, cancer patients are deficient in vitamin D. So that alone should tell you a lot about the state of, of health and disease in our body as it relates to connecting with nature. So the more that we block ourselves from receiving sunshine, receiving fresh air, we're actually reducing our ability to be in optimal health and well-being, reducing our ability to have optimal immune functioning specifically as it relates to vitamin D. So we want to connect with sunshine as much as possible. And it, you know, think about the sunshine state of mind. <laughs> we want to connect with that, that lighter sense that being in sunshine, think about in the summertime. When you're in the sun, oh, thank you. <laughs> when you're in the sun, you literally feel lighter and freer and more joyful. So connecting with the sunshine is really, really important, but also practically super beneficial to our well-being. So connecting with other people, community, friends, yourself, nature, also connecting with a higher power, if that resonates with you. Having the sense of connection is really, really vital to our overall sense of well-being, but to making us feel supported and, and grounded and to have that faith to keep going no matter what. 
So other practical steps that we can take to connect with the light would be to meditate. Meditation is so important for calming our mind, releasing the stress, and raising our frequency. So the, and that again gets into connecting with our higher self, connecting with our, our inner intuition and our wisdom, as well as you know higher consciousness, God, whatever you want to call it, uh, source. So meditation is a really, really uh, beautiful way to create that connection. So raise your frequency by grounding down and meditating. Um, so we have the gratitude practice, the connection on uh, like in physical, literal ways with other peoples and our uh, people, <laughs> ourselves and nature, um, meditation, and also movement, movement, moving your body. And it doesn't have to be physical exercise where you're sweating all the time. Movement in the sense of, of you know, it can be a walk in nature is really a beautiful way Way to kind of bring some of these pieces together but also dancing I love dancing myself it immediately raises my vibration when I put on a fun song that I like that just gets me like bopping <laughs> um, and and just moving my body in any way it just feels really really good so put on a song that pumps you up just move your body dance even if you're not a big into dancing just like you can even feel the between the mu music and and this like your body literally wants to move to it even if you're just kind of like bouncing side to side like nothing fancy or whatever you know it's just kind of generating it's moving the stagnation so that's what this is all about too is is allowing the stagnant energy in your body to move, to flow, to get it, uh, you know, to release it from these stuck, if we're sitting down all day, the energy in our body gets stagnant. So we really have to prioritize getting up and moving our body and it does make us feel better. So that would be another key way to help you connect with the light and generate these higher vibrational states and raise your energy basically is what it's all about. How do you raise your energy? Um, so also have fun, live in joy as much as you can, reconnect with the things that bring you pleasure, that you find fun and exhilarating and bring you joy. Think about when you were a kid, what did you like to do? What do you like to do on your days off? Try to bring as much of that into your daily life as possible because we are lacking in joy. We are lacking in fun for the most part. So especially right now, it's also the holidays. They're encouraging us to not connect in the holidays. They're encouraging us to like not celebrate. And I think that's really sad. So <laughs> be a little bit of a rebel and celebrate. L watch those silly Christmas movies. Put on the Christmas music and dance. Like connect with your loved ones as much as you possibly can. <laughs> and, and do things that bring, like make you have fun. Just it, whether it's related to the holidays or not. Do anything that brings you joy. Um, so also being in the flow, some creative outlet, uh, you know, writing, whether you're creating art, anything that puts you in the flow, which is basically this sense of you, you are so absorbed in what you're doing. You're so connected to what you're doing. Again, this is a sense of connection. You're so absorbed in the task at hand, in your art, in your writing, and in, in sometimes if, if it, you love your career, if this is what you do and it, it brings you joy, then you're just so absorbed in that state that you lose sense of time and you are just one with whatever it is that you're doing basically. So being in that state of flow can also raise our energy in its own way. Um, so art, creativity, joy, being in the flow state. Um, and and oh, I, I mentioned sunshine, I just have a little list just to make sure I catch them all. Um, but also heart-centered living, so returning to the heart and really, really connecting with that heart wisdom and and returning to what brings us the sense of peace, what brings us a sense of love and compassion, and connecting in deeper ways with the people around us. 
and uh, there there's a lot of layers to it but but really coming back to the heart is so key so heart-centered living more and more it's the sense of I, I can get into this in another video but there's something called um, heart coherence that it, it's kind of more biologically based but it's it's being in these higher frequency states, these higher energy states, and it literally has a tremendous impact on every aspect of our life, uh, including longevity. So that's something that I think we all are seeking right now. <laughs> we want to be in a state of love. And this is actually, for me, getting back to this idea of love over fear. Love over fear always. Love over everything always. So heart-centered living is just coming back to love no matter what. Coming back to compassion for ourselves, for other people, and just connecting with the heart and the, the sense of heart wisdom, which I was getting into a couple videos as well. Uh, yeah, so... <sighs> I think that's what I have for today. So connecting with the light, practical sense, just to recap. Um, so gratitude practice, as I was getting into in more depth yesterday, connection with yourself, with people in your life, with your tribe, with nature, with source, consciousness, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, God, if that's your thing. Um, movement, having fun, living in joy as much as possible, being in a state of flow, um, art, creativity, heart-centered living, and, and yeah, sunshine, I, that's back to nature, but sunshine and grounding in nature right now I think are more important than ever because especially leading up to the 21st, actually connecting with the light of the sun is super super important and to ground that down by being in nature if you can put your feet on the ground as you're in the sun that is incredibly incredibly helpful so um i will be diving in i will be going more into the ideas of the dark and the shadow in the upcoming videos. So, <laughs> too many truth bombs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of truth bombs <laughs> is the goal, <laughs> actually. Yep, yeah. good, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad it's working. So, yeah, um, just, and, and if nothing else, you get nothing else from this video, connect, connect in every way every way you possibly can um and connecting with the light means literally connecting with everything in your life in a deeper more profound way in a more heart-centered way so i will be coming on over the next couple weeks to share more and more so stay tuned and if you want to dive into the other videos they're here on igtv as well as uh i've uploaded them to youtube so they're all up there the link is in my bio for that and onward and upward i love you guys thank you so much